Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the NBA slate on DraftKings for Thursday, June the 13th. Uh, we got Game 6 of the NBA Finals on Thursday. We got another showdown slate with a ton of big prizes going out there. Uh, another million dollar prize pool tournament. I think it's like 200 k to first or 250 k to first. Uh, so a lot of big tournaments for this showdown slate. We're going to look at the player pool, make our way through the player pool, start from top, go all the way down till we hit the guys that are going to see minutes. I'm not going to talk about these guys down here at like 1K, 2K, because they just don't play any minutes. They don't play enough minutes that you want to roster them. But once we go through all the guys that uh, play minutes and all the guys that are playable, we'll look at some different lineup builds as well. I'll build out a couple lineups, just show you guys where I'm going on this showdown slate, uh, the guys that I feel like I'm going to be playing, how I'm going to be constructing my lineups. Uh, but before we do get started, guys, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video and if you are new to the channel make sure you click that subscribe button down below so that way you won't miss out on any of my new videos uh, so starting off at the top Steph Curry is our most expensive option here he's 12k at home in this game six or game six of the series and I really like Curry here I do prefer him over Kawhi Leonard on this slate Curry at home in a pivotal game a must win game a do or die game I expect him to play very well he's gonna see massive usage with Kevin Durant officially done for the season and out for this game, we know the usage is going to be there for Steph Curry. Uh, so I really like him at 12K. He is my favorite spin-up option on this slate, and I do slightly prefer him over Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Kawhi is 200 cheaper, and obviously Kawhi has been great throughout this series, but I think Curry gives you more upside in this spot. I think Curry has one of those big games like we saw, I think it was game three or game four. He went for like 72 DraftKings points, just had a monster game. I think we could see one of those games tonight from Steph Curry. Uh, 73 DraftKings points in Game 3, I believe. 47, 8, and 7. Would not be surprised if we see Curry put up like 40 points here. Uh, so I really like him at 12K. Slightly prefer him over Kawhi, but obviously if you can play both of those guys together, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, Draymond Green for me on this slate is probably going to be a secondary option, just not a guy that I feel like I have to have at 10,400, especially with him being closely priced to those top two guys. Like, Curry and Leonard are just miles ahead above everyone, in my opinion. Draymond just hasn't given you that 55, 60-point upside that you kind of need. Or for him to be, like, a guy you have to have, he's got to go for, like, 50 DraftKings points. If he gives you, like, a 40, 45-point game, he can definitely be a guy that you don't really need to have. Like, you could get similar production to, uh, for what Draymond gives you for cheaper. Like, I think Klay Thompson outscored Draymond last slate, and he was, like, $2,000 cheaper. Klay had 44 DraftKings points. At 8,800, I think Draymond had like 41 DK points at like 10-4. Uh, so I do like Clay, uh, 9,200. I do prefer him over Draymond when you get those $1,200 savings. On a slate like this where there's not a ton of great value, those savings are going to be crucial. Uh, so I do like Clay a lot at 9,200. Prefer him over Draymond for the savings you get. Uh, Pascal, Pascal Siakam, not a guy I'm going to a ton. I would much rather play Clay for just 400 more. I'd rather save $800 and play Kyle Lowry. Um, I do like Kyle Lowry again here, 8K. Uh, last game against the Warriors, he was pretty decent, 37 DraftKings points in 42 minutes. Uh, Lowry continues to play huge minutes. The production is going to be inconsistent. We've seen him go for big games. We've seen him sort of just give you mediocre scores. But if you just look at the guys priced around him, I think it gives you more upside out of a guy like Siakam. Uh, Siakam's $800 more as well. I think it gives you more upside out of a guy like Marc Gasol. Even though Gasol, Gasol is $1,000 cheaper, I still think I would rather play Lowry at 8 k uh, So I do like Lowry and Thompson a lot. Those are probably my two favorite like mid-tier plays. And then once you get down here past the mid-range, so like the value, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Gasol and Van Vliet. Van Vliet at 6600 not a big fan of. Just don't like the price. He needs to be cheaper for me to really want to roster him. He's getting the minutes, but the production is just so inconsistent. I could get a better score from out of other guys like Boogie could easily outscore Van Vliet. Uh, Marc Gasol for 400 more could definitely outscore Van Vliet. So not going to Van Vliet. Gasol at 7K, I think it's a pretty good play here. Uh, he did, our DraftKings did raise his price, though, a lot, up th up $1,000 off, off of what it was the last slate. He was 6K on the last slate and had 30 DraftKings points. He was pretty good at his price tag. Now he's up to 7K, so he's not as good of a play as he was on the last slate. I do prefer, like, saving and going down to some of these 5K plays because I think I think some of these 5K plays could give you just as much points as Marcus Gasol. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins is one of them that I really like. Uh, Boogie's definitely a guy I've kind of been just iffy on this whole series. 
I think this is finally a day where we see a really big boogie game like we saw in uh, game two, I believe it was, where he played 28 minutes and had 37 draftings points. I think this is going to be one of those games where Boogie plays about 26, 27 minutes and most likely gives you 35, close to 40 draftings points. I really like him now that Kevin Durant is out. Boogie's going to go back to the starting lineup. He's only 5,800 as well. He is dirt cheap. Uh, he looked pretty good even on the limited time he was on the floor last le- or last game. 20 minutes and 26 draftings points. Uh, he did make a couple like crucial mistakes towards the end of the game, which did hurt the Warriors a bit, even though they were able to come out victorious. Uh, but while Boogie was on the floor, he was efficient, he was effective with his 14, or with the stats at least, for 14 points, six rebounds, and assist, a block and a steal in the 20 minutes that he was on the floor. I think Boogie gets about mid 20s, upper 20s in minutes in this game. And at 5,800, he is one of my favorite cheap plays on this slate. Uh, Serge Ibaka as well, I think, is a pretty good value. Ibaka's not playing a ton of minutes, but he's just so efficient and effective when he's on the floor that he is definitely in play as a value. Even last slate, he scored 27 DraftKings points in only 17 minutes. He usually gets about low 20s to like high teens in minutes, so he'll probably get somewhere between 17 or 17 to like 22 minutes, somewhere in that range. Most likely, he's going to give you anywhere from 20 to 30 DraftKings points. Maybe you spark like a 35-point game out of Baca. Maybe he gets like four or five blocks like we saw in game uh, three, I believe it was, and he gets you 28, 30 draftings points. But a most likely, uh, most likely uh, score out of Baca is going to be like 25 DK points, probably 20 minutes played. And at 5,400, that does make some good sense as a value play. Like I would definitely play a Baca over Kevon Looney. Even if Looney plays, he's just not healthy right now. We saw it last game. He just wasn't really efficient and good when he was on the floor. I would much rather play Ibaka, much rather play Andre Iguodala. I think Andre Iguodala, again, is one of the top value plays at just 4,800, especially now that Kevin Durant is out. Uh, Iguodala is going to get more minutes, going to get more usage with Durant off the floor. And even though he was pretty poor from the floor last game, just shot 28% from the field, uh, 30 minutes, still saw 20, or still got 20 draftings points in 30 minutes. Uh, he just contributes in so many categories. Points, rebounds, assists, defensive stats. Iguodala can just do a little bit of everything. So I really like him again on this slate. He saw his price decrease again. He's down to 4,800. So he's a top value play for me under 5K. Danny Green at 4,400 is sort of like a, if he fits into your lineup, if he's like the last guy in, I think that makes sense. But I would definitely try and play Iguodala over Danny Green or play Ibaka over Danny Green. Danny Green, much more of a secondary option. Uh, and then once you get past Danny Green, there's not much more that I really like. Like, I think Livingston's one of those guys like Danny Green where he can be sort of a last guy in. If he fits into your lineup, then you can put him in there. But really, I would only be going to guys like Livingston and Danny Green if you're trying to do, like, a star-studded lineup. And if you're trying to play, like, two or three studs, then obviously you're going to need to fit those cheap guys in. But other than that, I would try and avoid, like, once you get past Iguodala, I would try and avoid going to anyone else under him. Uh, so I think that's it for the player pool. I do want to go ahead and build out a couple lineups real quick, see what we can do. Uh, with we, if we want to make a lineup with Steph Curry as our captain, it's going to be tough on the slate, but I think Curry just gives you so much upside here that he is definitely captain worthy. Uh, so we're going to need value. We'll start off with a couple value plays I like. Boogie's one of my favorite values, and Iguodala is one of my favorite values. So if you go with those two guys in there, you get back up to 7,100 remaining per player. So there's a couple ways you could go from here. You could try and fit in a stud like Kawhi and then go with another cheap play. So if you want to go with Kawhi at 11-8, that leaves you 4,800 remaining per player. So then you could go to Danny Green and you could probably go to Serge Ibaka. Damn, couldn't get to Ibaka, which sucks because I really don't want to play Kavon Looney. I guess if you go to Livingston at 3,800, that would leave you enough to get up to Ibaka. So that's a build you could do, but... I don't really like going to those guys under living or under uh, Iguodala if I don't have to. So I'm going to try and avoid uh, playing guys like Livingston and Danny Green. So maybe let's go with a couple mid-tier plays. I think going to a guy like Kyle Lowry or Klay Thompson, 9,200 for Thompson or 8K for Lowry makes a lot of sense. If we put Lowry in there at 8K, that gives us 6,700 remaining per player. So then you could probably, let's see, if you wanted to play Thompson, that would leave you enough to play Sean Livingston, which is okay. Or you could go to like Gasol, you could play Gasol at 7K. That'll leave you enough for Ibaka, even though I don't really want to play Gasol and Ibaka together. If you put uh, Siakam in there, that'd leave you enough for Danny Green, which is, I definitely think, fine. That's a route you could go. Or you could probably go like uh, Gasol. Then you could probably play like Van Vliet and 
couldn't have enough for Lowry, which sucks. If you want to play Gasol and Siakam together, that'd leave you enough for Serge Ibaka. But like I said, I don't think I want to play all three of those bigs together because they kind of uh, negative, negatively correlate. If you want to put Thompson in there, though, that would leave you enough for Danny Green. Like I said, don't really want to go to Looney, so that's a build you could do right there. You have $800 left or salary on the table, so you can maybe do a little bit of uh, tweaking if you want to upgrade a position. Maybe if you want to go from, like, Thompson to, or they can't upgrade from Thompson, but or maybe if you want to take out like Iguodala, if you don't think Iguodala is that great of a play, you could upgrade from him. Or if you could, you could upgrade from Cousins. You could go from Cousins to Van Vliet if you want to do that. But I think that's a build I like quite a bit if you want to go that route. Uh, looking for cheap captain plays. There's not really a lot of cheap captain plays that I love. I think Boogie, though, does give you 35, 40 point potential here. And he's only 8,700. So if you were to play him as your captain, you could definitely go with the star-studded lineup. You could play Curry and Leonard together. Uh, if you throw in a cheap guy like Iguodala, who I think gives you good a good score at his price tag, that would give you back up, or that would get you back up to 63.50 remaining per player. Um, if you wanted to play another stud, maybe like Clay Thompson, then you could do that. That'd leave you enough for Bogut, but I don't really want to go to Bogut. So let's look a different route. If you want to go with Lowry at 8K, then that would leave you enough to play Danny Green. So that's a way you could go, or you could play uh, Gasol, and that would leave you enough to play Ibaka. Like I said, don't want to play Gasol and Ibaka together because I think they kind of negatively correlate. Uh, but going Lowry and uh, Danny Green, I think, makes a lot of sense. So that's definitely a build you could look to do. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, I think trying to pay up for captain is the way to go, whether it's Curry or Leonard. I think those are the two guys you probably want to try and jam into your captain slot. And then you go to those cheap plays that I mentioned. Boogie, I really like at 5,800. Ibaka at 5,400, I really like. Iguodala at 4,800, I think, is a great value as well. Uh, Cousins, Ibaka, Iguodala, those are the three values that I would probably be going the heaviest on today. Uh, but I think that is it for this showdown slate, guys. I think that is it for the video. Um, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped you. Um, hopefully these videos just throughout the playoffs have helped you. I, you guys seem to really enjoy them. And I do really like making them. Uh, it's always fun to play these showdown slates, especially during the finals, because it just gives you something to sweat while you watch the game. But anyways, like I said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you are new. Um, if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT. Uh, or you can leave any comments, any questions down below in the comment section as well. Uh, but yeah, guys, good luck tonight. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.